We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Yo, promoter Eddie Hearn says Anthony Joshua wants to <clears throat> knock out Andy Ruiz smooth, clean out. And he says Joshua just needs to snap out of it. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We work him. Before I get started, Vasily Lomachenko is fighting Luke Campbell as two gold medalists fighting each other this Saturday. And they have an upcoming UFC card with Poirier and Khabib Nurmagomedov. Both should be very good. The UFC is a pay-per-view. The ESPN Plus will show the Lomachenko versus Campbell. It is for Mikey Garcia's old belt. Sign up below. It helps the channel. I'm an affiliate with Disney and ESPN Plus. Sign up to ESPN Plus below. They got a ton of content that they're frequently updating. And that's that. Link in the description of all my videos. So if you guys want to sign up for that. Now, Eddie Hearn, he's promoting, you know, Luke Campbell versus Lomachenko. So he's done some interviews. He did one with Sky Sports. And as you guys see, it says Eddie Hearn tells Anthony Joshua to snap out of it over disillusion with boxing ahead of the Andy Ruiz rematch. We unpack coming to you live. So, you know, we definitely got to talk about this. I thought this was a very interesting quotes. Eddie Hearn has told Anthony Joshua to snap out of it after the former world heavyweight champion admitted that he has grown disillusioned with boxing. Joshua lost his WBA, WBO, IBF world heavyweight titles and one of the most high profile shocks of the generation when unheralded Andy Ruiz Jr. stopped him inside of seven unforgettable rounds, New York, Madison Square Garden, June 1st. He has since agreed, you know, let me pause this, to a deal to face Ruiz in an immediate rematch on the 7th of December in Saudi Arabia and is expected to bank a career-high payday as a result of his decision to box in the Desert Kingdom. Joshua's 29 will come face-to-face -face with Ruiz for the first time since his defeat next week when the pair take part in the three continent press tour to promote the fight it says but during the interview with sky sports joshua admitted that he has lost quote a bit of passion for the sport right let me pause this he has lost a bit of passion for the sport and has been left feeling jaded after failing to secure fights with either of the world's two other leading heavyweights Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder, oh my god, <laughs> or Tyson Fury, there's only one, right, so he, he says, now his promoter Eddie Hearn, the man behind the fight in Saudi, says his client must stop feeling sorry for himself as he bids to regain his world titles and get his career back on track, quote, this is Eddie Hearn, I think he's just got to snap out of it, I think he was disillusioned with the sport because he wanted to fight Deontay Wilder, he couldn't get that fight, and he said in the interview he didn't really want to fight Andy Ruiz. But tough, you fought him, and you fought a real hungry guy. I think the great thing about this promotion is that now, for the first time next week, he looks a man in the eyes who is the only man to beat him as a professional. It's going to be absolutely huge. The whole world will stop to watch this fight. The first stop on the tour is the Saudi, Saudi capital, and that's on Wednesday before they do a press conference in New York on Thursday and then the final event in London on Friday. Hearn believes there will be very difficult atmosphere during the buildup to this encounter compared to the first fight in June when Joshua drew criticism for allowing Ruiz to pose with the world championship belts at the final press conference, which, you know, new media. I told you guys when he did that, this is before he lost, right when he did that at the final press conference before the weigh-in even. I said, what is he doing? Like, when when have you seen a heavyweight volunteer? It'd be one thing if maybe, maybe like a PR person says, hey, you know, let him use the belt or let him pose with it. Or do you mind? Or 
if it was like Lomachenko in um, Lomachenko in Luke Campbell, because they're fighting for Mikey Garcia's old WBC belt. So neither one of them really own that particular belt. So you have seen pictures with Luke Campbell holding the WBC and probably pictures with Lomachenko holding the WBC because right now it's nobody's belt. They're the highest rated people. Well, Loma's a champion, a unified champion, but Luke Campbell is rated high with the WBC. He's the number one rated person. So I could understand that. And I told you guys that when it happened, that was a no-no. And you look at Andy Ruiz, he looked like a kid in a candy store. It started getting good to him. He's looking at the belts like, oh, shit. I can get used to this. And now he is used to it because he defeated Joshua. As you see in this picture right there. He on the ground. I'm in the car trying to figure out what the fuck just happened. The matchroom boss believes the defeat in New York has changed Joshua, who conceded that he lacked motivation in the first fight with Ruiz. But now, with his career on the line, the darling of British boxing could turn, quote, nasty. His demeanor appears to have already changed somewhat with Joshua surprisingly labeling former unified world heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis a clown. Hearn says he ain't going to be giving Ruiz no belts to hold because he doesn't have them anymore. Right. And that's a horrible statement, you know, because now he doesn't have the belts. Ruiz ain't going to let him pose with his old belts. Most likely, you know, I've never seen no one really even do that at the high level of boxing. Like I said, It'd be one thing if it was maybe, maybe a vacant belt. Eddie Hearn continues, said he doesn't even want to talk to him. He wants to knock him clean out. He didn't have that feeling last time, but it's a new game now, a new game. Joshua wants to take his head off. He's thinking, I've tried to be the role model. I've tried to be the guy, but people have slagged me off and said what they want to say. Now I'll say something back. See, listen. Oh, my God. I can't wait to unpack this. I can't wait to unpack this one. See, now we're getting somewhere. So this is this is more proof of what I've been saying on my channel, new media, in regards to Joshua. He doesn't know who he wants to be. He thinking, I tried to be the role model. I tried to be the guy, but people have slagged me off. Listen, that, that doesn't make sense because... Mother Teresa is going to be Mother Teresa, despite what other people say, you know. So I think there's always been a conflict and it shows with Joshua's demeanor. I think, you know, his PR person, publicist, image consultant, whoever is trying to make him look like this, you know, oh, he, you know, so he can get supplement deals and stuff. And they making him look like this and he looks uptight. He looks stiff and he's like, oh, yeah. Never let a loss go to your head and this in your heart. And it sounds unnatural. It sounds forced. It sounds contrived. Now he's calling people like Lennox Lewis a clown and saying, if you think he should leave Rob McCracken, you're a clown, you know, and now we're getting. So it's it's kind of like he's trying to play too many. He's trying to be too friendly or not even be too friendly. He's trying to appease everybody. And that's not the sooner you realize that, the sooner you'll be better off like me. I say my piece and I hit the record button, say my piece, and then I'm out. Hopefully you guys agree. Hopefully people respect it. If not, this is all I can do. Joshua, he says, now he gets criticized for calling people things like Lennox Lewis, Lewis, who has criticized him and giving him sly digs his whole career. You know, they're trying to create Lennox Lewis like he's just like, you know, been hating on Joshua. Joshua can't win, so he's decided do you know what maybe it's a new approach bring back the nasty joshua we hope the nasty joshua comes out for the ruiz fight but first for Hearn is this weekend sold out promotion luke campbell lomachenko o2 arena campbell you know and this is more about campbell so very interesting stuff very interesting so joshua first of all this this is weird now okay so it, it, this Joshua, his whole career has been like some Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde shit. You know, he when Dominic Brazil was disrespectful towards him, he was like, oh, don't don't look at me like you and do nothing. You 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 bloody Yanks, you Americans all talk, you know, and he was like he put he kind of checked Dominic Brazil, if you will. Six foot seven, big guy. And he's like, yeah, you don't have a problem. 
you got trouble. You know, he's talking like, you know, Dominic Brazil, Urban Dictionary. He was talking like uh, Clint Eastwood and Dirty Harry. You don't have a problem. You got trouble. Well, do you punk? You know, and Joshua, you know, you could tell he was, it was bothering him. He's like, man, don't like, you know, don't run up on me. Don't, you know, don't do this. But then when Wilder was screaming on Joshua all of last year, Wilder was like, oh my God, Joshua is a coward. I promise you that. He's like, he went to the UK. Good morning, Great Britain. Joshua, he said, Joshua, look at me. Look, you a coward. He called him a coward. He was like, he didn't want to fight. I'm going to smoke him out. I'm so flat. Bro, he was screaming on it. And then Joshua played this role. Why didn't you? Where was the Dominic Brazil approach? You know, when Dominic Brazil annoyed you, you know? So Joshua is like he's living two different worlds. Same thing with Dillian White. Dillian White, if you guys watch the, the special, the gloves are off for their first fight. D Dillian White was being really disrespectful. He's like, oh, I don't like him. He's a scumbag. You know, he was he was talking like crazy. He did, the two didn't like each other. And Joshua was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's your opinion. You know, it's your opinion. Like he was. So to me, it, it seems weird. It's like you you did that. So Dillian White, you know, Dillian White gets gangster. You know, we know Wilder's from the hood, too. It's like you don't do that to them. You know, you don't have that that same energy. But then you did it to Dominic Brazil. You know, it's just weird. It's like I said, it's like. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, right? And I, I don't know if Joshua knows who he wants to be. He's like trying to do this dual image and it like double impact. Remember how one Van Damme, yeah, what are you doing? You know, one was like polite. The other one was like a badass chat and shit. You know, it's like this is what Anthony Joshua wants to be in the new double impact. Jean-Claude, bah, what are you doing? Keep going. You know, he wants to be Van Damme, like, in double impact he don't know if he wanted to be the good brother or the 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 one that's um reckless and the bad boy and smoking cigars and shit you know with the a five five o'clock shadow you know it's just weird it's just weird and i get this from what eddie hearn's saying he's saying like oh now the nasty joshua is coming back why where was the nasty joshua when wilder was screaming on him saying you a coward. Oh, my God. I'm going to smoke you out. You don't want to fight. I promise you that. I'm going to knock. I will knock. Him. And then Joshua was saying things to the effect of, oh, yeah, he cannot get in my ring. This is my ring. This is why I like Povetkin and Klitschko because they they handle business. They had signed contracts. This is what Joshua was saying. Joshua did all of this. And then now... You know, he's he's we're supposed to we're supposed to see this newfound nasty Joshua for the Andy Ruiz fight. Listen, it, it, it seems like there's a lack of confidence um, because only a lack of confidence would make you this inconsistent. In my opinion, again, I'm not a psychologist, but only a lack of confidence would make you this inconsistent. Now, I'm not saying he's he has no confidence at all because he's lacing them up. So he has to have some level of confidence. But I'm saying. It, it it varies like maybe some days are better than other or something because again a man an alpha male is going to be congruent with these says you know you you like zab judah zab judah is from brownsville brooklyn i promise you if you violate then zab judah is going to try to check you he don't care how big you are or whatever he's it's just that's who he is and i know stories about zab you know i'm not going to put his business out there but i've heard of stories but like you know, Zab ain't, he, he, he's a fool. Like, you know, he's, he's not going to just accept that. You know, look at the Mayweather fight when, you know, he was hitting low blows and this melee broke out and Roger Mayweather hopped in the ring. You know, it's just, it goes down like that. So Joshua, again, it's like he's trying to play these, these dual, like dual citizenships and have these dual roles. He don't know what he want to be. He want to be one minute. He want to be like American. Then the next he's like, oh yeah, I'm doing this for the British people. You know, I'm. Why should we not get fights? And it's like weird. It is 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 bizarre. You know, he just he just posted something and he was like, he's like, yeah, Linux is a clown. You know, no squares in my circle, cause like, what part of the UK are they talking like Crips, like Nipsey Hussle? Like, it's just weird. You know, and 
this makes me lean towards Andy Ruiz. All of this, like, listen, everything I said has been on the money regarding this particular situation. I have read it like a book. He just, this whole article is Eddie Hearn responding to some things that Joshua said. He says he lost his passion for boxing. Why would I pick him over Ruiz? It's not impossible. It's not like Joshua is not strong. It's not like Joshua doesn't have power. We get it. He has those things. But this does not sound like the complete confidence of a fighter. He's talking about, look, but during an interview with Sky Sports, Joshua admitted that he has lost, quote, a bit of passion for the sport. Bro, boxing is not that type of sport. Boxing is not a type of sport. If you lose passion, you got to go. You should retire because somebody will retire you, you know, and Joshua does not seem based on all these variances of stuff he's saying. I'm really worried. I'm really concerned. This is no cap. I'm really concerned because this is not a sport like that where you should uh, continue fighting if you lose passion because this another motherfucker don't care about how you feeling they're out there trying to live their best life Andy Ruiz is trying to provide for his family and this is a martial art and a hand-to-hand -hand fisticuffs and combat you know you shouldn't be in there like I don't I'm not even trying to create an issue but he needs to speak with someone to see if he's even fit to do this immediate rematch this pressure seems like it's like weighing and it's been weighing him down you know, lost a bit of passion. But why are you doing an immediate rematch? Why not? See, this is just, this don't look good to me. You know, I could be wrong. I'm picking Ruiz. Could be wrong. But you lost a bit of passion. That don't sound good. Because in certain interviews, he, he's like trying to put on a brave face. And he's saying like, oh yeah, I'm, motivate, I'm motivated now. Because the first fight I wasn't. But now I am because I want to be two time champion. So it's kind of like as he goes, he's trying to build himself up as you know, as this happens. But I don't know. It's just the things he says, the quotes lost a bit of passion. It doesn't really sit well with me and it doesn't really make me want to like I wouldn't bet on Joshua because I don't know when when a person seems mentally checked out or starts saying these things and inconsistent things it becomes hard for me as a person to rely on that i like consistency i like on things that have showed up you know more often than not you know preferably all the time and eddie hearn telling him to snap out of it like these these don't sound good these words i don't understand joshua's team to even put this shit out you know i think he was disillusioned with the sport because he wanted to fight Wilder. Now, somehow, Eddie Hearn and Joshua are blaming, you know, pretty much inadvertently blaming Wilder for Joshua's shortcomings. Bizarre. That is bizarre to me. He's delusion disillusioned because he didn't get the Wilder fight. You could have fought Wilder last year. My channel, New Media, we push for this Ego's Army. Everybody wanted to see the fight. You asked, oh, 50 mil, I'll take the fight tomorrow. They offered you 50 mil plus 50% 50 of the back end. Joshua's team said, no, didn't want to fight in the U.S., but then you came to the U.S., were, were initially coming for Gerald Big Baby Miller, but you had all these excuses why you didn't want to fight Wilder in the U.S., Gerald Miller weighs 317 fucking pounds. How are you willing to fight a 317 pound man in New York? And he's a New Yorker in America, might I add, for less money, a less desired fight, a smaller purse and like less giving to the fans because nobody was really talking about Joshua versus Miller, Big Baby Miller in the same way they was talking about Wilder versus Joshua. Wild, Wilder weighs 209 versus Tyson Fury. 209 fucking pounds, man. And Gerald Miller is a volume guy and he weighs 317. But you had all these like hesitations 
about fighting in America against Wilder. Like this shit looks crazy. If you really put it all out on the table, it looks absolutely insane. And then Miller, obviously he failed a drug test. So you end up losing to someone that doesn't even look the part in Andy Ruiz that you weren't supposed to look, you know, you weren't supposed to look bad against. Only have five weeks to train. And immediately after, there was all these rumors like swirling, just, oh, Joey DeVecco heard him in sparring. He came into this fight with the concussion. He, you know, wigged out and he, he got scared or had a panic attack. So that's why his dad lunged at Eddie Hearn and these different things came out and they immediately deaded all of those. They said, nope, this is not true. Do Joey DeVecco, all these various rumors are untrue. Andy Ruiz won because, you know, he had the better plan. He was the better man. That's it. He's like, this is my law. Joshua did a vlog. It sounded like a cover up. Like they were just like, nope, nope, nope. All that's false. No panic. You guys know me. Why would I have a panic attack? Like, we don't know you like that. We know of you because you're a celebrity, but we don't know, you know, we don't know what you would do in a situation like coming to America, fighting, and then having a switch of an opponent that you didn't initially train for. You know how we know how you would react when this was a very unique situation. You're coming for Gerald Miller. Five weeks later, it gets switched to another guy with a whole different set of attributes. You haven't fought as a pro in America. How we know how you're going to react. But Josh was doing vlogs like, oh, you guys know me. You know, why would I have a panic attack? You know, that's foolish. And they gave Andy Ruiz props. Now, fast forward to the future. Joshua is slandering Andy Ruiz. He did the Sky Sports untold Joshua story or whatever it's called, Lifetime Movies. And they said, oh, were you surprised with how skillful Andy Ruiz Jr. was? That's what the female reporter asked him. And he says, he's a good fighter, but he's not that skillful. What do you mean he's not that skillful? He, and she was like, he beat you. He knocked you down four times. He's like, yeah, by lucky punch, a punch from the gods, sent from the gods. Man, this sounds crazy. This sounds insane. So you were humble pie immediately. This is him the week after he lost, you know, days after he lost, popping a wheelie and putting motivational, you know, Billy Blanks quotes, Tybo quotes and Tai Chi and all this shit. Don't let success get to your head or failure get to your heart and flexing and smiling and saying, oh, I was in the Knicks locker room and I had fun. Let's do it again. And doing vlogs a couple days later. I want to go back to the scene of the crime, which you don't want to go back to the scene of crime because you don't want to fight in America again, you know, at least for the rematch. You wanted to fight in Saudi Arabia or Principality Stadium. You know, this it just all of this looks bad. This looks terrible. And new media, we called it. We called everything down to a T, shot it fair, straight shooter. This looks crazy. You know, again, after you lost. You were humble to Ruiz. Now you're talking about Ruiz won by lucky punch sent from some some type of gods or Allah or whoever, you know, Zeus, whoever sent this power to him, this power of grace school, you know. But before, when the Joey DeVecco rumors immediately were swirling, you said, no, all that's false. He just won. He's a better person. I got to accept my loss and hold my L. But then now you're sounding like you disappear for a while after that. And then now you come, you reemerge and you sound like a poor sport, you know, talking about lucky punches and boxing, like speaking almost as if like it's a casual talking, you know, and immediately after to shut up and silence those Joey DeVecco bad sparring or people were like, did he underestimate Ruiz? Eddie Hearn and Joshua both said he did not underestimate Ruiz. I made videos saying, why is he training in Miami? Why is he doing MTV crib style vlogs and shit? You know, that seems weird, especially when he's having all these changes and Gerald Miller fell, fell out. It seems like you would be focused on this new style and, you know, instead of worrying about a YouTube. And Andre Ward kind of said that he said he was like an Instagram model or something. He's, he's doing stuff for the shape and it just doesn't seem right. You know, so it seemed like Joshua doesn't, his heart's not in boxing anymore. Like, like it, you know, I can't speak on behalf of him, but I'm just saying the outward looking in, you know, he's seeming to have a problem. He, t he said before the Ruiz fight, he got a sports psychologist. This is all stuff you guys could research. You know, we're, 
how do you get a sports psychologist when you're winning? You know, I, I'm OK with trying new things, but you got a sports psychologist when you're winning talking about what if what if what if I get hit with the big shot by Andy Ruiz? Why would you even put that in your mind? You know, and I peep, I study, I study the game. Joshua came in the game and said he wanted to be boxing's first billionaire or make a billion in boxing or some shit like that. Now you don't even hear him talking like that. Now he's lost a bit of passion. Now he's disillusioned with the game and he wasn't hungry. But immediately after the fight, when the Joey DeVeco sparring rumors and his eye was had a black eye, they're saying he had a bad camp and his dad wanted to cancel the fight. He was like, no, physio. As if I got a physio TV in the physio. This is what he's saying. And he said, no, Andy Ruiz, it was his night. Congrats. That's what happened. You know, we lost on our terms. This is what Anthony Joshua said. Fast forward to the future. You know, the fight's on finally. And they're going to do a press conference. Now he's saying Andy Ruiz won via lucky punch. All that humble shit's out the window. This sounds like schizophrenic. This sounds bipolar. You know, it really, truly does. And then now he's saying, like, making excuses and, and lashing out at Lennox Lewis, who really didn't even do anything, you know, because he says... You can't go to university with your third grade teacher. And, you know, Joshua just said, this is him, the fight week. He, he said he had a great training camp. And then now all of a sudden it's coming out. Look at this article. I just went over what he said to Sky Sports. He says that he lost passion in the first fight. But now, look, it says now after it's happened, he's lost a bit of passion. But hold on. Look, here it is. The matchroom boss believes the defeat in New York changed Joshua, who conceded that he had lacked motivation in the first fight with Ruiz. But now, with his career on the line, that could turn him nasty. So he says that he lacked motivation to even fight Ruiz. But immediately upon the loss, he was humble, and he says he trained like an animal, like he always does. And Eddie Hearn corroborated this like, oh, Joshua always gives it 110 percent. So these these things keep switching. And I don't see how, especially with new media around, I don't see how they don't see how this makes them look bad. You said you did not underestimate him. That's what you said. You said you did not underestimate him. But this sounds exactly like underestimation. Look. I'm going to show you all something. This is a video I did. Look. I hope Anthony Joshua, man, new media have been on it. I, I hope Anthony Joshua, not taking Andy Ruiz lightly, films a, quote, MTV crib style Miami gym YouTube video. I posted this May 21st, 2019, before the fight. And I voiced my concerns before the loss, before the fight week. I, I seriously, seriously hope, hope Anthony Joshua, Joshua is, is not taking his marriage debut lightly. lightly. What up, what up fight, fight world? world? It's your boy Ego, Ego and I'm back with some more boxing. boxing. Make sure you smash, smash the like button. button. Also, also subscribe to the, to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you, if you want to become part of the gang, gang, gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. icon. Shout out to Super Chat channel, channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We work right now. I want to read, and this is kind of funny because Joshua just did some recent interview to where he was saying he's not, not underestimating Andrew Ruiz, but I'll let you know why I'm still making the video. I'll start with the Joshua quote. Joshua said, said it's not about, about what you look like, like, it's about craft, craft. it's about skill, what's, what's in your heart, heart, in your head, that's, that's what matters what in the end. And Andrew Ruiz has shown, shown that he has all his fighting box, box, that's what matters. I think, I think Andy, Andy is a great challenger and will bring it on June 1st. All I've heard is AJ will smash him in the round. From the outside, they think that anyone can box. So how is the guy that doesn't look like a boxer able to box? I always say that if you put 10 bodybuilders in the ring, 
not, not one of them, them could fight for a regional reason, title in boxing. boxing. Take, Take me, me out, out of my, of my body, body, but keep, keep the, the same, same attributes and height. height. You know, same jab, same chin, same, same heart, heart, same mind, but I look different. I'd still, still get to the same position I am in because it's within you that makes you a champion. Your genetics and his genetics are the same, and he took the fight. And he was keen, game, and you cannot knock him. He can fight, and he got hands. He gave the world champion Joseph Parker lots of problems. And when you look at the fight that Parker gave Dillian White, when people are saying White can be Wilder, Fury, Lee, and Andy Ruiz is championship level for sure. And I have not underestimated him one bit. Now, wow, checkmate. You know, checkmate, that's great. <sighs> checkmate. So I did that video before the fight actually fucking happened, before the loss. The title of the video, you can search it on your own, is I hope Anthony Joshua is not underestimating Andy Ruiz. And I started off, I hope he's not underestimating him for his American debut. I started off with a quote that I had read from him where he says Andy Ruiz is championship level. And a lot of people think I'm going to go and smash him in one round. But I'm not looking past this guy because, you know, this is not a bodybuilding contest. So it's not about looks. He can fight. He got hands. I'm not underestimating him. Okay. Now, check this Sky Sports untold story. And it says, oh, yeah, he was unmotivated in the first fight because it says the matchroom boss believes New York changed Joshua, who conceded that he had lacked motivation in the first fight with Ruiz. And he did another interview where he said, oh, I didn't want to fight Ruiz. I was thinking about the big picture with Wilder and fights with Tyson Fury. He's like, I thought they were going to be next. Bro, this sounds crazy. He thought Tyson Fury or Wilder would be next, but he complained that Wilder was not responsive to his emails. He was on first take the week of the Ruiz fight, before the fight, of course, and he was like, meet with me. He's like, yeah, I'm done talking. I've done the talk. Go watch the first take. It's, you can find it on YouTube, right? And then fast forward to the future, he's trying to act like he thought the Wilder fight was next. You couldn't talk to him. You said he wasn't responding to your emails, and it's frustrating because you guys and Eddie Hearn are trying to make the fight you know, there's just a lot of backtracking and a lot of double talk. You were trying to make the fight and how? what else can you do? But you've been reaching out to him and he was not trying to make it. Then Wilder announced on your fight week that he was fighting. At first, he just said he was fighting Luis Ortiz. And then on the day of your weigh-in or whatever, he says, not only am I fighting Ortiz, if I get past him, I'm fighting Tyson Fury. So how is Joshua now acting as if he thought the wilder fight was next now he's doing interviews you can look this up and joshua says wilder and tyson fury they got their next two fights booked up they are trying to freeze me out so if you're using the verbiage they are trying to freeze me out that means you are cognizant that means you are aware of the game plan that they weren't worried about you gave you a chance last year wilder says i'm this is wilder he says, I will make Joshua and Eddie Hearns regret this. We we try to make the fight. We were taking stupid short money and they're going to regret this. The deal that what we the, the low ball deal that we were going to accept is now over. It's off the table. We're not taking it. We don't care anymore. We're going to just go about our business, but they will regret this. This is all stuff you guys could research, you know. And that's exactly what they did. Wilder fought Fury, had a great classic. And, you know, he started getting a lot of notoriety. He was on Joe Rogan's podcast. And, you know, he's in the movie. He was at the, the Final Four game. And he started blowing up even more so because people respected the performance. Tyson Fury got up like a goddamn, you know, Undertaker and all this shit. And that blew him up. The other thing is Joshua didn't go to that fight. I was there, you know. Joshua, that would have been huge. He's claiming he wanted to fight Wilder and Fury so bad, but he was in America. I don't know if he was in that day, but days later, he was in Oregon for Under Armour. So he was coming to America. Joshua specifically said, this is all stuff you could research, specifically said that he wasn't going to even stay up and watch the fight. Not only was he not being ringside and not going to the Wilder Fury fight, 
He says he wasn't even going to make it his business to stay up, which we probably know is a lie. You know, he said he wasn't going to stay up. He, his sleep was more important and he'll catch the he said, I'll catch the um, the highlights on Instagram, on social media. But he said he's going to sleep. Look, man, th see, this is I told you new media. This There's no escape. Look, I got videos for all this. Look, Anthony Joshua sleeping through Wilder Fury because it's on too early. Look, I got videos on all, all the subject we're talking about. Look, nine months ago. So this is what Joshua said. Anthony Joshua sleeping through Wilder Fury going to bed is on too early. See, we got videos on all this, so there's no escaping. So he he's claiming now he was disillusioned because he really wanted to fight Wilder. He really wanted to fight Fury and he didn't want to fight Ruiz. But previously they said, hey, we never underestimated Ruiz. He has an interview. I just showed you that too. I got receipts for all this. He said he was, he said Ruiz is a world-class fighter. He's championship level. He gave, he gave Joseph Parker issue and we're not sleeping on him. I'm not underestimating him. Now you're basically saying you underestimated him because you weren't motivated to fight him. You know, but now all of a sudden losing everything is what it took and you're motivated. I'm picking Andy Ruiz. This is so many receipts. You know, now you're blaming Wilder for your shortcoming. You lost and it's Wilder's fault because you were preoccupied with that. You're saying Wilder, you thought you were going to fight him next or maybe even Tyson Fury. But now you're saying you were froze out and they've been freezing you out. So you knew you weren't going to get to fight him next. You said Wilder's team wasn't even meeting up with your team. And there's only so much you can do. And on first take saying, meet with me. Listen, Joshua, like my mom used to tell me when we try to lie or something me or my siblings get your lies straight this sounds absolutely you know appalling that they would put this stuff out and just expect it to stick with this many inconsistencies and loopholes you know one minute they didn't underestimate ruiz then they did you know one minute before the fight he's saying ruiz is championship level and he's skilled then ruiz stops him drops him four times and then now he's bagging on Ruiz saying he's not all that. He's not that skillful. It was a lucky punch from the gods. He said he thought he was fighting Wilder next. But once again, I can prove, which I will, like I always do, new media. I can prove that Deontay Wilder rained on your parade and announced that he wasn't worried about you and he wasn't fighting you. Look, look, he said, this is the video. May 31st. Lord, 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 Lord. Got a big announcement coming today. Stay tuned. May 31st, Joshua fought June 1st. He said, I got a big announcement. This was the big announcement. Yeah. And it was like, oh, I'm fighting Luis Ortiz. Well, as I always say, I'm the realest champion in the business. As I mentioned before, I must handle all my controversial fights ASAP. Luis Ortiz is first, then Tyson Fury is next. May 31st. All before June 1st when he fought Andy Ruiz. Here's a trailer for it. I can't play it because of the music. And, you know, new media. We've done our job and we've done it thoroughly. We unpacked. I told you, these unpacks are going, we're going to go in. We're going ham. So this is more proof. Look, 400 and... Half a million people seen it, so almost 500K people seen this. I made a video about it, and Josh was now saying that they're trying to freeze him out, so he obviously knew about it. So the, you can't blame Wilder. These are all excuses. You're saying you thought you were fighting Wilder next, but he already told you. All my controversial fights must be handled. Luis Ortiz and then Tyson Fury is up. And then we heard from Bob Arum and Tyson Fury a little bit after that, that he's telling the truth so 
you can't use this as a scapegoat and act like you you were so preoccupied how are you gonna let a man beat you because you're worried about the big picture every fighter knows there is no big picture there's no future fight if you don't get past what's in front of you if tyson fury loses to otto wallen then the wilder fight is probably good as dead if wilder loses to luis ortiz then he's probably gonna have to do a rematch with him again a trilogy fight so joshua seems to be the only one that i can remember in recent memory who doesn't understand this concept you got to motivate yourself and stay hungry because mayweather can't fight canelo in september if he don't get past robert guerrero who he fought in may which was his interim um mandatory you know this is just simple two plus two math you know so i i don't buy this oh you know i i didn't take him serious and motivated and even if you do buy that then why did he say he didn't underestimate ruiz there's no way you can make all these things and tie up all these loose ends and make it all make sense. Again, this is like having several cords and you just threw it in a drawer, threw it in a in a bag. And now you're trying to you have corded earphones. You have different like, you know, lightning cables and micro USB cable. And they're all intertwined and raveled and balled up. There's no way to, you know, untangle this in a timely manner. There's too much has been said, you know, and I personally don't. We unpack coming to you live. I personally don't like what I'm hearing, just like the sports psychologist. Why are they revealing these things about Joshua? You know, Joshua all of a sudden is the Hollywood Hogan, like I said, and he's calling Lennox Lewis a clown, saying he's not switching his trainer, but he's taking more of this like villainous role and trying to be the bad boy and the villain and green do rags and he's 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 it just don't sound believable one minute he's he's sounding full of confidence like oh he wants to knock his head off but then he's like oh i lost a bit of passion you know people are being mean it's just i can't go with that you guys pick whoever you want that's my thoughts we unpack coming to you live i just feel like joshua's team has got to get this under control they should stop doing look Eddie Hearn's telling him to snap out of it. How is this a good sign? You know, some people are going to end up being disappointed, I feel, in this particular fight. You know, and Joshua, I thought he quit the first fight. Deontay Wilder and other people agreed. So, you know, we've seen it. You know, people like mentally check out, like Zab Judah has done it, Victor Ortiz, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. I wouldn't put it past someone if they have a moment. You know, even look at Oliver McCall in a situation like that. It's like, you got to be mentally tough in this sport. And I think when you're all over the place and all over the board, it makes it hard for people to believe it. So Joshua was going to have to make me into a believer until then I'm picking Andy Ruiz. You know, there's no hard feelings on anyone. I'm just breaking down what I've seen based on what I've been told. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. We unpack coming to you live. <laughs> oh my gosh. I told you I'm the realest in the business. Just like Deontay Wilder say. I'm real, and we unpack that. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe. If you like what I'm doing, I really go in depth with these. And, you know, that's it. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego, signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.